Broadcasting on Spice FM 94.4 in Nairobi. We are in Mombasa, 102.5 in Kisumu, 87.9 in Mombasa, 96.0 in Nakuru, Eldoret, 96.7, Nyeri, 90.9, Malindi, 97.7. This morning as well, from now until 9 o'clock, we are also live on KTN Home and we are live worldwide on www.spicefm.co.ke. So, CT Muga, as we start this conversation, what is today's proverb? Today's proverb is actually, well, it's almost as simple as yesterday's proverb. Mm. So, the eye never forgets what the heart has seen. The eye never forgets what the heart has seen. Not the other way around. Uh, what I would suggest, Eric, is that... <laughs> is I come up with my own proverb? No, no, no. <laughs> Just say that, can we edit your proverb to... <laughs> to <laughs> yes, Eric, you can edit the proverb. And that isn't mine. Uh, an African proverb. But I know it doesn't make sense, but think about it. Mm. What does the heart do? The heart feels, the heart experiences. Yeah. The heart is like the epicenter of emotions, as far as people are concerned. And I'm not talking about the physical pump mm. that is actually the heart. But... The heart and all that it encompasses. Yep. Yes. When an experience touches your heart, yeah, it goes beyond It what lingers. It goes, be thank you. I will oh. say no more on that lovely word, all encompassing. Okay. Mm. So let's have a conversation now this hour where we want to go to Siokimao and there's um, something that has ha been happening in Siokimao. Although there was a complaint by residents there and then there was action by the government, the county government of mm. Machakos. Uh, what's the story there? All right. So um, if we look at what has been happening in Siokimao for a couple of months now, well, actually uh, going into years, there is um, a metal smelting company that has been letting off quite uh, some in terms of pollution mm -hmm. um, in the area. And residents you know, in close proximity to this, have been complaining for quite some time in terms of the pungent odor that it lets out, um, in terms of then respiratory issues that they face after this. And it has been com it has been taken to NEMA as the as the body to sort out issues of pollution and environment and things like this. But nothing has really been done. There was a tug and you know push and pull back and forth between the residents and NEMA. Come and do something about this. Come and make the management of um, um, this particular company, which is Enmore Steel Millers, uh, said really that they did everything that they needed to do and they were within their rights or within the purview of the, themselves as an, as an entity mm. with the necessary, you know... Um, that followed the law. Oh yeah, they had followed the law with the mm. necessary regulations from NEMA. So there was a, you know, push and pull back and forth, but that never really happened. Um, until now, the agitation just became, you know, uh, too much. Residents basically could not breathe yeah. in their homes. Yep. Um, people became sick. And uh, one of the gentlemen whose stories then did come out about his children having been affected and one of his children, unfortunately, having passed. However, mm. he, could, he was very clear that he could not necessarily link the passing of this child to the pollution, yeah. but, I mean, it was heavily suspected and that another child then is now ill because of this. Um, so quite a number have been complaining. We also know that the government of Machakos shut down operations at the at the Millers um, sometime. But it's interesting to note, and I think that as we even speak about this, that a day after the shutdown that I saw with my own eyes, mm. the company was still in operation. OK, mm -hmm. and uh, then having her residents complain a little bit more about this. So it's a, it's a it's an environment issue. It's a pollution issue. It's a rights issue. And in, if proven, it could be, you know, a, a death issue here where somebody is dealing with the, the loss of a child yeah. because uh, of these. So this is one thing that we're looking at. today. So the issue has been highlighted in the media and the residents uh, led by um, the gentleman that we're going to be speaking to shortly, Nazio Savio Hakada, have you know come out to the public and said, this is what's happening in our area. Mm -hmm. And when it was highlighted in the public domain, immediately after that, we saw the government of Machakos County, the governor, Dr. Alfred Mutua, announcing that, well, he has ordered the closure of this um, steel millers and ordered that um, an inspection be conducted and meetings be held with the management of the steel millers, with the residents' uh, associations as well, to 
find out what's happening. And then last week, the governor released a statement saying after closing it, after ordering the closure, ordering the closure on the 14th of May, he was now uh, ordering the partial reopening, provisional reopening on the 30th of July. And he said, this provisional reopening is after meetings have been held between my senior government officers and the management of the steel millers we want to see whether this provisional reopening is to practically test whether the measures that they've put in place are effective in combating the pollution because some of the issues can only be ascertained when the plant is operational but the question i would ask is mm. when this plant was being set up yeah we do have a government body that's supposed to ensure that these environmental issues are more or less settled even before the company starts operating. Yep. Mm. Where do they come in? The National Environment Management Authority? Yes. And the others, of course, they give you license, and of course, they are also mandated to conduct uh, regular inspections of the facility. And uh, so how when we arrive at this point, when when residents are raising the issues, also they reach out to them. So let's first of all speak to Nazir Savio Hakada to give us his experience. Good morning, Nazir. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Welcome to the Situation Room. I'd like to thank you uh, for wanting to air our grievances and what we are going through. Mm. Now, Nazir, just you've heard the question that CT Muga has asked. I mean. We are talking about residents um, raising concern about this specific factory and reaching out to the relevant authorities. Which authorities are these that you have reached out to? Well, we have first, uh, in the beginning, I mean, we've been here for several years and um, the latest estates, I could say, say 10 years, uh, a few 15 years back, 12 years back, we, we've actually occupied estates in, in, within a locality of this uh, factory, we're talking about just 50 meters away, having a factory 50 meters away from an estate. Uh, we're looking at Five Star, we're looking at Sawada, we're looking at Bustani, and there are a few others around, uh, looking at almost uh, a, a, a thousand uh, residents around. And within, if you calculate the whole of Sikimau Residents Association, we're looking at almost 5,000 residents. This is a 5,000 residents uh, area. Um, this factory came in around 2016. Uh, not just four four years ago, three and a half to four years ago. And uh, what is surprising is that we reached out to NEMA when we could not breathe. We had issues with our, our, our you know, children, could not breathe, chest-related problems. Uh, as I said, I've said this previously, okay, we don't know whether this could be linked, but the doctors actually has told us just verbally, generally, yep. that you have a problem that uh, it could be linked. Uh, but, you know, you have to go scientifically uh, and, and do your investigation in mm. companies that would able to look, what is your pollution rate? Is this the, the issue? Code Africa has had sensors that were fitted in Bustani, in Sawada, mm -hmm. and uh, they did, they did uh, research and found out that the pollution rate or some pH rate, you know, scientifically, we don't understand this as layman, but they clearly said it was beyond the approved rate. Uh, BBC had this thing, and uh, they worked very close with uh, Code Africa and found out that, yes, uh, you know, indeed there is a, a certain amount of pollution that is not acceptable uh, from this factory uh, uh, to, against residents, yeah. especially it being a smelting uh, steel company. From there, uh, NEMA, we approached NEMA. We sent all the relevant letters. It was just silent. Yes, 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 yes. We had a meeting with Enmore and the NEMA authorities. They were asked for some almost 17 to 18 clearance certificates and licenses that were needed. Disposal, smoker, you name it. There were several. Change of user, because how did they come into this premises? Mm -hmm. This was a residential agricultural land one time. Yeah. We, we, did they ever apply for these licenses? Was there an advert? Were the residents made a party? Uh, to this plant before it was opened because yeah. I believe residents of a certain area must be. There are certain regulations that allows for such a plant to coexist yeah. where there is residential. During the close. environmental yeah. impact assessment, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. The exact words you've used. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I mean, they had, uh, in, in the interview, they gave us some four or five names that they only spoke to four or five people who filled some forms. We took those forms. We investigated. Three people don't even stay in Shokimau. One sells uh, food outside uh, maybe the factory somewhere there. And one was approached at the at, at, at Gateway Mall just to fill a form. Uh, you know, so we're wondering uh, what kind of assessment did they do? Who did they speak to? Okay. Which was the body they spoke to? We have Shokimau Residents Association, mm. an association that 
uh, you know, stands for the entire community. No one was approaching, none of the chairman, not the, not the treasurer, not the secretary, no one. Hmm. Um, we've gone to Neymar. Neymar has been telling us, giving us all kinds of reasons, this or the other. We ended up going to the tribunal. The tribunal, it's been death after death after death. Okay, let's get that paper in order. Hmm. Let's get that paper in order. I ask a question today as a resident. As a resident, where my children are affected, our children within the estates are at risk. The entire Sukuma Residents Association kids, we have over 10,000 children here. Okay? Mm-hmm. I ask the governor, I ask NEMA, I ask the courts, I ask everybody who is involved in this case and who are in authority to help us. Nas- Nazir, I'd be interested to know, if I can ask you, Nazir, yeah. I mean, you yeah. spoke to quite a number of people. I'd be interested to know what the initial response was to the questions that you were then asking. Because, I mean, you've asked so many things here. I mean, who gave these approvals? Who then allowed them to come in and begin this work in an area that was supposed to be residential? Then who then was responsible? What was the initial response that you were given? For me, I will hold two people. I will hold two people responsible. Our county. Mm. This is our our governor. He should look into this. Mm. Our, the buck stops at the governor. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yes, the buck stops at him. He's our leader. We appointed him. The buck stops at him. He cannot sit in his comfort seat and expect that. Yes, I will do what I want to do. You close down a factory. We are so happy with you. We were even going to approach him and sit down and tell him, okay, now let's find out where we went wrong or what is the problem. Did we go wrong? Did the factory go wrong? Where is the problem? Mm -hmm. Before even anything can be done, before he can even meet with the resident, after two, three days, the factory is opened. Mm. NEMA, zero. It's been going on, going on, going on, going on, going on. Recently, when we approached NEMA through one of our, our members, we said we want the, there was a van they have for air pollution, something uh, calculating this thing. Mm. There's a van they have. Clearly, they told one of our residents that, oh, the van is not available. Uh, it's broken down, something like that. And, you know, we don't really have all the mechanisms to do this. Then if you are NEMA, you are an authority, you are a body, and you don't have the mechanism. Then after a while, they posted something on the tweet saying yeah, yeah. they are now within Siokimau and they are doing some uh, quality check. Uh, you know, uh, okay, we'll see. We'll look at it. Have you organized yourself, no Nazir, night? as the residents and uh, the other people who are affected who are taking up this issue? Have you organized yourself and formally, let's say, come together as a group, uh, engage the services of uh, experts formally? Like you say, you've got um, the services of, of experts on environment, on uh, air pollution that you have engaged, on uh, legal uh, issues that you've engaged, environmental lawyers, who then would advise you as well in this journey of seeking answers we have got uh, a couple of lawyers dealing with the matter already it is in, in the tribal at, at the moment and again as we say it's delay after delay it's next week uh, now we, we've taken it towards the end of august yeah while while the factory is still operating so we had run some until end of august to hell with us what what the way it's been put Okay, mm-hmm. this this all this authority guys don't stay uh, within where we stay, so they don't care how long it takes. We have engaged our lawyers. We have engaged in the past called Africa. Mm. We have engaged uh, t- t- channel uh, TV channels uh, and radio stations that have actually aired uh, our grievances. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So we already have engaged professionals who have. We've had TV channels people, radio guys who have actually come here and said. Is that the smell? We cannot even breathe. Mm. They themselves cannot breathe at times during the day. They feel that, that when they're coming, can you smell that? Yeah. When when this matter was highlighted recently, again in the media, we saw the reaction and action from the government of Machakos, and the governor ordered the partial closure or the temporary closure of this factory. Set up a team and said, "I've set up a team to come and investigate this." And then when he released a statement and um, said, "We are." He's directing the partial provisional reopening of the factory. He also said, and we have the governor on the line, we'll be speaking to him shortly. He said, I announced a meeting of the Siokimau representatives, a maximum of seven people, to meet the officers from the county government, four people, and factory officers, four people, at the Mavoko County offices this Saturday, the 8th of August, to review the status of the pollution and other associated matters. Have you uh, been contacted? Have you form, formed yourselves? I mean, have you sat down as a, the residents association to come up with the team of seven that's going to represent you in this meeting? Brother, let me tell you one thing about SRA, Sukuma Residents Association. We are a very serious team. We have our people ready even now, if you ask us. Okay. We're always ready. Okay. 
We don't need to pick who's going to say what because our team has always been ready. We have an environmental team okay. within Sukima Residents Association. These are guys who are versed with certain parts of the law and what is required and what is not required. So we are not a group of people who just woke up uh, from the corner of a, of a house and said we are now uh, a team ready so, so to you're ready, engage. Uh, and you're yet prepared we don't for know this anything. meeting that's been called on Saturday. Ready. But we are, so far, uh, from what I know is I have not heard anything. I've been keeping in touch with uh, our John Mutinda, who is also a very senior in the environmental, our environment. Mm. He, last when I spoke to him, he told me he, he, he has not yet received anything at the moment he was waiting. We're just waiting. So let's, that we are, uh, they allow us to do this. The other problem we are facing is we must have this within a friendly environment. The last time we, we, we went when the factory was being shut, uh, a, a, a couple of hours, uh, us were beaten up. We were beaten. We had to go and file a case at, at the Malolongo Police Station. We have, uh, we have uh, OB numbers beaten, filing beaten uh, against by, the, the, the... Can I we ask you, Nazir, yes. so uh, yes. as this is progressing, so if you had a confrontation, now whom were you then, because if you talk about assault, who were you then assaulted by at this point? Uh, we, we, the, the factory workers actually came looking for us. Mm. Mm. Okay. Let's bring in the governor of Machakos County, Dr. Alfa Matua, who's also joining us on the line. Good morning, governor. Good morning. Good morning. Salama Kabisa. Thank you very much for speaking to us, uh, Governor Mutua. You've heard um, what Nazir has said, um, and you, of course, you yes, have yes. been following this matter of uh, the mm. animal steel mills. From mm. the initial reports that you received, and which made you to direct the partial closure of this factory. What is your reading of the situation? Uh, let, me, let me first say uh, I'm quite, quite sorry uh, what, what Nazir and the residents have actually gone through. It's, it's terrible. Uh, people shouldn't have to go through such pollution and such agony and such bureaucracy uh, because it is their right to have a good life in a good environment. So... I'm very, very sorry about that. I want to admit, first of all, that I was not aware of this issue at all. You know, as a governor, there's so many issues. I was not issue. I was not aware of this issue. But one day I was driving to Nairobi from Machakos, and uh, there was this pungent smell uh, as I drove up uh, past Mlolongo, you know, around that area. Mm. And I thought for, for an instant that maybe we'd had a spillage of maybe a toxic toxic quest from a lorry coming from Mombasa or something. Mm. So I called my Minister for Environment and I told her to investigate where that smell was coming from and to contact NEMA and others, whether they look at uh, NTSA, where there's any poisonous stuff around. And uh, she wrote to me uh, a week later, a few days later, and explained that it was a factory called Enmo ETC, 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 uh, with a problem. Unfortunately, due to our working hours, whereby we don't go to work now every single day because of uh, COVID, mm. I did not receive the letter until five days later. The letter was delivered, but I saw it about five days later on my desk. And by the time I saw the letter, that's when the issue was already in the media. And I called a meeting and I said, uh, what is going on here? And so I sent an inspection team to look at the factory. And the report that came back to me is that this factory was not only contravening uh, pollution laws, it was contravening COVID-19 regulations. Mm. It was contravening all other regulations. Mm. And I asked my team, how come it's been operating all this time? Does it have to wait until it's in the media? Does it have to wait until I smell the spillage for, for people to act? So that is when we closed it down. Okay. And I have to admit that since it closed down, I have received numerous phone calls from everywhere in this country, you know, from colleagues, uh, from senior government officials, from whoever, you know, mm. uh, trying to urge me to open. I know there's a delegation from national government was sent to see the factory, to come and see me, to try and get it open, and I refused. I said no. I said, you know, the health of people... Uh, is more important, just like what I said in my statement when I closed down the, the factory, mm. that our health is more important than money. Mm. So those who are applying pressure but, but, from those other quarters, what is their justification for pushing for the reopening of the factory? Oh, well, this is a local guy. This is uh, The rest of the guys are not really local. 
Uh, this is an African, the rest are Indians who own these meals. Uh, this is one of ours. This is, you know, the normal stories. Mm. Uh, trying to say that uh, he's being harassed because there is a conspiracy against him by other steel millers. You know, this is a money issue. Mm. And, uh, and But I refused to meet them. I refused to meet all these delegations. And I said, no, I operate above board. I don't want to meet anybody. So let my team uh, do their work. And as we had promised, we'd go back. We had given them time. Because also, as the governor of Machakos, I have to protect the residents, but also I have to protect investors. Sure. I have to protect businesses that set up, because these businesses provide jobs, and also it's people's rights. People have capital investment of billions of shillings, so you don't just shut people down without mm-hmm. giving them a fair, oppo- uh, a fair opportunity to actually explain themselves. To be heard as well, yes. Uh, and to, to be heard and also an opportunity to continue operating because if you look at this, this is a multi-billion operation. This is not a few hundred million shillings. This is probably a two to three billion shilling investment that has been put there. Uh, and somebody's life and business is in it. Uh, about so many hundreds of people are depending on it yeah. in employment. Yeah. So it's a balancing act. As a leader, I have to balance these things. We want to understand the no steps worries. that your government took once you ordered the closure. Um, the steps that, you also, that your officers also took in reaching out to the complainants who are the residents around there and also to understand the next steps that we expect to see being taken off from both sides. We still have Nazio on the line and we now we're speaking to Dr. Alfred Mutua, the governor of Machakos County. It's about the closure and partial reopening of a steel mill that has um, made the residents of this particular area in Siokimau uh, complain that you know there's a lot of pollution, air pollution in the area, and many of the residents are complaining that their their health has been impacted. Keep it right here. This is a situation. Room. It's Kenya's biggest conversation, broadcasting on Spice FM, broadcasting worldwide on www.spicefm.co.ke, and also broadcasting on KTN Home. In the room is Eric Latif Nduoko and C T Muga. On the line is Nazir Savio Hakada. He is a member of the Siokimau Residents Association. He is one of those uh, residents who have been affected by the operating steel mill uh, called Enmore that has been operating in his area, in his neighborhood for a number of years now. They've raised concern about this. They say that there is air pollution um, that is emanating from this particular factory and there's a pungent smell. And this has been confirmed by the governor of uh, Machakos County, Dr. Afamutua, who himself says at one point he was driving down the road and he could smell this and he raised questions with his uh, uh, officers and also the matter has been discussed in the public domain so this is what we do on this show we reflect conversations that are happening in our community and we seek answers from those that have got answers nazir has said that uh, they raised this issue with the national environment management authority they've raised the issue with other relevant authorities and they've gotten no satisfactory answer the governor of Machakos County, once this matter um, came to his attention as well from media and from uh, uh, his own um, experience raised an issue about this and he directed that the factory be closed for a while as he assigned a team to go and review the operations of this particular factory. And Governor Alfred Mutua, you're saying during that time you received mm-hmm. a lot of, um, you know, uh, shall we say pressure from several other quarters saying this is um, a Kenyan company. You need to think about the kind of investment that's been put in here. Be that as it may, I mean, Governor, where, from where you sit, you're dealing with two citizens of Machakos County. One is a corporate citizen and the other one is a citizen's body of human beings mm-hmm. who are saying that they are affected. The questions that emerge now from here is you set up a team and you told this team, go and investigate what's happening at Endmore. What did they bring to yeah. you? No, they, went, they went and looked and the main idea was the company said according to my officers, that they are going to take corrective measures and we should give them a chance. What exactly were and they going to correct, uh, Governor? No, no, you see, the issue is, why is there pollution? Because there are, they, we have other factories, steel factories in Machakos. This is not the only one. And there are measures that have been taken according to international standards, the European Union standards, American standards, Australian standards, whereby there are machines you hook up such as the the pollution that comes out is basically oxygen whereby you're able to clean the air you're able to clean the chemicals and basically all you spew is good and clean air i mean technology has caught up with these things and we realized that the factory had not put those measures they're expensive measures to put and so people take shortcuts 
and uh, there are other measures that can also be taken through the production line mm. to ensure that there is no uh, pollution. So after they went, after about a week, we gave them seven days. We went and inspected, and we were shown machines that had been bought, machines that had been put in. We were shown things that had been put in place. Uh, they were running the machines uh, for us. We saw that uh, the air quality was okay. We had our machines. But then we told them, for us to be able to open your factory, because we don't want you to poison our people, mm-hmm. we're going to allow you to operate for one week. And let's get the feedback. Let's let our experts be able to test the air quality. But the best tester of the air quality are the residents of Sokimau because they're the ones who are hurting. Mm-hmm. And that is why I said, after this period, mm. on the 8th of this month, let us call, let us have a meeting, a public participation meeting, between the factory, uh, our experts, the NEMA experts, and the 190, and let the truth come out. Have, has the factory really pulled uh, its weight? Has it done what it's supposed to do? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let the residents' voices be heard. At the Let same the time, come as... out and say and say this is not happening. Mm. This has happened mm. because Kunukora, for example, I when I ordered the factory to be closed, I was surprised the following morning to find that it was operating. Yes, it was. So I had to send my I had to find send my askaris huh. to actually arrest the people mm. who were operating. There's mm. a sense of impunity here. Okay, so Governor, you know I mean? may I ask you? So at this moment, when we are speaking, the factory yes. is in operation. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. so Nazir is here with us on the line, and if I can ask you, Nazir, yeah. right now, from what you, because you live in the area, has there been any difference since the time where these corrective measures were said to have been put in place, or at least were asked of this company, and what you're experiencing at the moment, even before your meeting on the eighth? What do you experience now? Let me let me let me uh, let me address this issue since you've asked this question. Mm-hmm. And our governor needs to know the people he's dealing with. This particular factory is very, very clever. They know the magnitude of how much work they need to do in order for that pollution to come out. When, when they are desperate and they need production to be done, they will put it at a maximum power. When they are being investigated or they know anybody is keeping an eye on them, there's the watchdog. And now they know there's the watchdog. They will do it so minimum at a minimum rate. Mm. And this is how they have always been operating. There are times when they heard things coming in court or anything that's coming up in the news, they would kill it down. They would keep it very low. And right now they know they need to satisfy the authorities. They need to satisfy the, the, the governor's team. So they are operating it at a very low level. Mm-hmm. I will assure you, once the governor issues that letter or whatever happens, it is a goodbye. We will not hear from the governor again. We will not hear from his team. And why I say we will not hear from his team? Let the governor also know the kind of team he has. If it takes the governor to drive through that factory one day and smell that thing and investigate, and then he comes back and he says he has an environment team. Where was this environment team all these years? Hmm. When it was coming in the press, well, it was coming in the news. Can, 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 that, can I, that's a valid can question. Can I, can I that's in? a valid question. Let's can, hear from uh, Dr. Yeah, can I chip in? Can mm-hmm. I chip in? You know... Uh, if you noted, I did some reshuffles in my government. I got some people uh, removed from those dockets. Mm-hmm. I did some reorganization because it was very clear something was not right over here. And I can assure you, Nazir, that the standards that we will agree on, and you will agree on with my team on the 8th, are the standards that are going to be maintained. And any communication from my office will be very clear. If this factory goes against what we've agreed on and they go to what you're talking about now increasing the production and the pollution comes back i can assure you we'll yank that license and we'll physically close down that uh, factory for life mm. we are not going to allow people mm. to play games with us and i'm not going to allow my 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 people to you know to, to continue to suffering used to play games yeah uh, the, uh, no no the, even the my, issue... my work has to be so, but I want to, I the want issue to of workers, as we, as we continue with this conversation, Dr. Tari, yes. the issue has been raised by the residents. There is an environment department in the county well, government. Yeah, there, there is, there there is, is it, environment at the national one, one, level. One of the, reasons, yep. one of the reasons when I ask my people, why haven't you moved into this factory? Why did you have to wait for me to take action? They say that NEMA was on top of things. 
and that they had been talking to NEMA, they had communications with NEMA. I saw letters between us and NEMA, and NEMA had gone to court. And the courts had issued an injunction against NEMA closing the factory. And we have to, to obey court orders. But Machakos had not been party to these court cases. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we can move. So from the documents I've seen, NEMA can, is basically powerless as we speak right now. They are not allowed by the courts. But during this time, as, as your officers were having the conversation with NEMA, writing to one another back and forth, was the issue yes. ever escalated, even brought to your CEC meetings? Uh, it was, but you see, you see, you know, we cannot deal with, you know, my friend, mm. we have our 500 factories in Machakos operating right now, yep. different issues. Not every, every issue uh, comes to a cabinet meeting. You know what I mean? Departments are supposed to deal with their issues. And so it had not yet come all the way up because we deal with so, so many issues. And this is not the first one. We had issues with another factory. We had other issues. And some of them are sorted at departmental level, and it's taken care of. I what mean, needs to happen before it gets to a cabinet meeting, uh, Bona uh, Governor? It, uh, it needs to be, I mean, it has to be a memo. It has to be an issue that now has failed to be sorted by the department that now needs a countywide discussion. About it, it. it seems that this let has let gotten a lot example. of attention, Governor, however, if I may let ask. Me, it seems that this has gotten a lot example. of attention because the residents have tried. They've clamored for a very long time and they haven't got any and audience. To, it went to the media. To, it went to the yes. media and it has gotten attention. Is that what needs to happen for some of these cases then to be given attention? Well, at, at times, i uh, tell you the truth, that is what needs to happen. And that is the nature of all things. I mean, I remember at one time... Uh, I had a house in the United States, and there was a mall that was coming up next, and we residents felt that like it was it was not proper, and we demonstrated, and and uh, we called the media, and that's when action was taken. Unfortunately, governments are big machineries, and governments cannot really uh, move as fast as the residents want to move. So I have no problem myself with the residents rising up and calling for their rights. I'm one of the people who says that if the system is not moving as fast, let the residents speak out. You know, so we want the residents. So it is not, I mean, we should have proper system. But you see, the residents had actually complained. NEMA had taken it up. My officers had been following up, and they knew that NEMA was on top of things, and there was a court order barring any action against it. So it's not to say that nothing had been happening. It's only that when it blew up, and when I smelled that, I, I called my lawyers and I said, does this court order bar me from doing something? And we went through two days of going through the legalese, and we found out that I had the powers to do things. I was not barred myself okay. and the governor okay. of Machakos from taking out action. Governor, before all these things happen, you say you have 500 factories within your jurisdiction. Have you ever 500 had... 500 plus. Okay, let, let's round it off to 600. Mm. Have you ever had such a case before? Yes, we have. We have. We've had uh, several cases before. Yes. And uh, there was a very recent case in Machakos, whereby there was a factory where we got a complaint that the workers in the factory were dropping dead. You know, they were burying a worker every month or so. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were producing their chemicals, and the residents around there uh, were complaining. I, we got a letter. Uh, the thing is, this Sukimo so resident association did not write any letter to my office directly. Yes, mm. they dealt with my government, but there was no letter to my office directly. Mm. So they cannot say that I got the letter and sat on it. This other uh, factory, we found out, had a problem, and we shut it down. And they took corrective measures, and we had health experts and all that. So that is just a recent one. We had another one in Kilimani area. We've had one or two uh, in Rolongo, another one in Sokimao. So there, there is a general abuse of regulations. Mm. There's a general abuse of the law in the Republic of Kenya. And it, it cuts across the board, you know, from the police to the highest offices, where people feel that they, they don't need to obey the law. I mean... Uh, you look at it also sounds to me, yesterday. Governor, that there's, you know, a, there's, there's a problem with the enforcement agencies in your government. Or the inspection agencies. The inspection. There is, there is, no, no, no. The inspection agencies, I, but we, you know, these are the ones that now become overboard. There are others that we inspect, 
and we are able to take measures because before they become problematic. But there are those others that start playing games. Uh, like Nazir was saying, mm. you are there today, you inspect everything is okay, a week later they are back to normal. They shut operate. down quite a number of them. You know what I mean? Because there's a culture of impunity that we need to deal with. How and, do we uh, deal with that, Governor? Because you see, for well, someone we, like we Nazir, need, we need, somebody like we Nazir who way. has already lost a child and they highly suspect that this child died as a result of pollution from this particular factory, this is very, very that is already a case too many. Yeah, it's, 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 and Nazir, my, my condolences, it's, it's quite, it's hard, sad breaking as a parent. I know what it means to lose a child. I mean, it, it just makes me choke, uh, losing a child over something that you think should have, should not have happened. We need a change in Kenya, my friends. I mean, I, this is not same because this is also political. We need a change in the way we do things in this country. We become extremely bureaucratic. Our systems are very long. You look at uh, the court systems are used frequently to stop, uh, you know, to basically constrain justice, whereby our procedures really, people give, uh, what do you call, injunctions at times, mm. in places where they shouldn't give injunctions. Our legal system is, takes too long. For example, you see, from the time the injunction was given, it's been months. An injunction should have been given for one week or two, or two weeks, and then the case is sorted out and factory closed or something moves. But injunction is given, and then it, it can even last two years. Can I you ask you, I Governor, mean? I just want to ask a question here, because as we're talking about the whole legalese of, of things now, there's a set of regulations yeah. which I believe that certain companies within cer several jurisdictions are um, asked to operate within, is it not? And yes. if you find yes. that certain companies are not operating within those regulations, why then is it so difficult? It seems like the push and pull is quite a lot. Why is it so mm -hmm. difficult to get them pulled out of operation? Because we're talking about no, we, lives we, here. We're talking about mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. not living with quality of life. We're talking about loss of life. We're talking about the environment being endangered. We're looking at so many things at the same time. And then on the other hand, we're talking about a multi-billion shilling industry that we can't just see go to waste. So why is it so difficult to get them to operate within regulation? Well, I think it's because, as I said, our judicial system is used and abused. Because but is it really a problem with the judicial system, Governor? It, it is, it is uh, largely, uh, largely a judicial system. Uh, trust me, my friend, we have tried shutting down some factories and we've been slapped with court orders telling us not to touch them. You know what I mean? And so our court system has been abused because people mm. know when they go to court, uh, it is going to take two to three years before that case is ever had. And so they can continue abusing the law. But nonetheless... Do nonetheless, you have leeway to not renew a license? Yes, you do. We do. We do have leeway. But you see, when a court order says you cannot take any action against this company or affecting the operations of this company and you deny them a license, then you are you're held for contempt of court. And right. people's lives and hang so, in the balance at the same time. Exactly. And that is why I'm saying that we need, the, a, new, we need a new way of doing things in this country. But do, do we also we have a, leeway we need a to new ensure way of changing things. that factories yeah. are not allowed to even begin operations until and unless they meet this, the most stringent of requirements? And that these well, requirements this is, are adhered to, is, surely. Yeah. yeah, this is where now I've told my people that, you know, there are some responsibilities that are not ours. Mm. The responsibility of ensuring that the factory is up to environmental standards is not up to my county. That is a regulation that is done by NEMA. And we depend on the NEMA approval. And that is how it works. Yeah. So, you know, when you're building anything, if you want a loan, you want whatever, the banks ask you for NEMA approval. Okay. So, so the, the banks will not come and do due diligence because NEMA is supposed to do that. As a county government, before we can allow you to operate, we ask you for your NEMA approval. Mm. So if NEMA has already given you the approval, so we believe that the steps have been taken. So NEMA also needs to answer some questions about the type of approval that they give. So there's a breakdown there. There's a breakdown. Yes, there is the issue when it goes to court and courts are basically doing their job, which is what is presented yeah, because before the, them. The, the, court, the court will look at it and say, was this company approved by NEMA? Yes. Yep. Uh, did this company then get an operating license from the county? Yes. yes. Has this company invested? Yes. Has this company? Yes, yes. So why are you shutting it down? Hmm. So it comes back to the regulatory organ organs, NEMA, my government, other governments. So that, and this has been very good because now as a result of this, hmm. 
I have asked my team to look at the regulations and we're going to change. And now we're going to get equipment so that we don't just rely on NEMA. We add on and say that before you open, you are cleared by NEMA, but also the county government and environmental department also has to clear you. Right. Um, you have a meeting. Which is basically, which is basically, which is basically double dipping. Yeah. Because it now we are, we, are, we are doing other people's jobs and so we shouldn't. It's going to cost us. You have a meeting on the 8th of August and um, you called yes. for everybody to come and, you know, um, share in terms of the ideas and what can actually be done. I mean, I, yes. I'd be very interested to know that what can residents, because I'm looking at it from that side, what can residents be assured of? Because at the end of the day, well, I, I think, think they would get the short end of the stick if operations still continued in the manner in which they're operating now. No, I think they can be assured of that as long as I'm the governor of Machakos, you're not going to allow their lives to be affected by pollution. These companies are either going to uh, operate properly or shut down. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, we are not going to allow lives of children to be, you know, taken mm. because people want to make money. But in the same way, the company has said that they want to operate and that they are going to adhere to the set regulations, ETC, then they better keep their end. But also... As residents, uh, it is also good to know. You know, there was the issue about uh, land. And uh, I know when uh, Professor there was giving us the quote of the day, mm -hmm. I like calling Professor, uh, about the, the eyes. What is it? <laughs> the eye does not forget yeah. what the heart has seen. Yes. Yeah, especially when the heart sees land, you know, as some people <laughs> in this country do. <laughs> so, uh, so when, you know, when people move into neighborhoods mm. and, the, and there are already factories in that neighborhood and there's a zoning, you know, there's zoning and you know the way the zoning system is, yep. some areas are zoned agricultural, others are zoned, uh, some land is agricultural, but areas are zoned commercial, industrial, are zoned yes. residential mm. and etc. Et yep. It is important as people invest to check how the zoning is, because the zoning in that area is both industrial and residential. So we are rezoning the area to cut the boundaries. So because I have seen people come and put a building next to a factory that has been there for 30 years, yeah. and then after a few months, they want the factory to move. And we see this a lot. You, know, you see people moving on to an airport that has been there for 50 years. They put up residential around the airport, and then after a while, they want the airport to move because now it's causing pollution and the planes take off. And noise. So your so lands department so is not taking this? No, there's a responsibility between the residents and there's a responsibility between uh, the government and also the people who are investing. Mm. So people also need to know as you invest, you need to look at the environment around where you're investing and find out how is it zoned. You know, why, who, who owns this piece of land? What factory is here? Because some of these factories have been there for a while. And so you come and put up an apartment building next to the factory. And then after a while now it affects you. But nonetheless, they, sh the they should not be polluting anyway. They shouldn't yeah. be polluting <laughs> whether it's in an area as, that has as, nothing in close proximity to it, though. I, if we're looking at the environment point. alone, as, void of individuals. At the end of the day, everybody needs to perform the way they are performing. And yeah. they need to perform according to the regulations period. Governor Alfred Mutua, I want to thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Would like you to speak directly to Nazir Savio. In fact, we'll start by asking Nazir to speak to you directly and pass on a message to you. I mean, this is somebody who says he's been personally and directly affected. He has lost one child. He has another child who's mm. sickly and highly suspects this is as a result of pollution in his neighborhood. Nazir, speak to the governor. Dr. Alfred? Yes, yes, I will yes. first uh, wish you, I'll wish you well, and I will uh, talk to you as a brother, not even now as my governor. Mm. I address you as a brother. Just to correct one statement, our residents have been here several years, many, many years before this factory came up. This factory came up 2016, it was put up. So we were here way before that. That is one. When we had our meeting uh, with NEMA and uh, with uh, the factory, this was sometime uh, last year in the beginning, uh, there were almost 17 to 18 violations that were noted and they were asked to sort this problem out and come back. Until today, we've not heard from them that whether they obtained the licenses or what were put in place. Residents were not made part of 
uh, approving the spec tree when it was being put up. There were regulations mm. that were violated. I think Nazir. Till today, I want to interrupt you, Nazir, because uh, I wanted you to yes. just give a direct message, and I think you've already started giving that message. Uh, I'd like to take a quick break. Dr. Mutua, your response to Nazir and the residents of Sokimau. I want to tell Nazir, Paul, enough what has happened, and uh, I just want to tell you that uh, I want you to feel free to contact me directly. You don't have to wait until things go out of hand. And I'm asking the resident of Machakos, write to me. I respond to letters uh, quickly. Uh, if you write to me directly as the governor, it will come to my desk and I'll assign an officer to deal with it and action will be taken. So as you rightly said, the buck stops with me. You elected me. I'm there to serve you and I'm going to serve you. And so if my officers are failing, Please let me know and I'll take action. Because as you know, at times I may not know any, everything. I can't know everything that is going on. So when things are happening and you think the governor needs to know, yep. please let me know and I'll take action. And I can assure you that we are not going to allow your child, your family to suffer anymore. They have suffered enough. Thank you very much, Dr. Motua. We'll uh, reach out to you as the weeks progress to see the impact of uh, the action that has been taken by the county government of Machakos and also the level of satisfaction of uh, the residents of uh, Siokimau and also even the investors around Machakos County. Asante Sana for speaking to us both. This is a situation room. It's Kenya's biggest conversation. You've heard from uh, the residents of Siokimau. You heard from the governor of Machakos County. And you also, when you listen to this, it points, for me, it points to a very big issue here where it's a breakdown of um, communication and breakdown of order between government people and people who are supposed to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, I think because for me, it's yeah. about NEMA doing its job. It's about the Department of Environment in Machakos County doing its job. It's about the Ministry of Environment in the country doing its job. This is not just the only issue. The other day we were talking about the um, Mombasa case. It took very many years, back and forth, threats being taken to court, uh, court injunctions, calls coming from high places, same thing we see here today, calls coming in from so-called high places to try and persuade or try and, and uh, push a, a certain agenda. Hmm. Unfortunately, bureaucracy takes place and then this and then individuals, lives are lost, sacrificed on the altar of this same, same bureaucracy or this same, same wanting to do favors for whatever it be, the powers that be, politically lead whomever, uh, those who have the power of the pocket. And it's quite unfortunate that we still have conversations like this. Look, and I say, look, even if it was a company that was standing on, a, an, on an island by itself and was still causing harm in one way or another, whether it just be to the environment and not individuals, that's more than enough to say that there are certain regulations that should be followed. If you have porous laws or you have a porous mechanism for ensuring that laws are adhered to, mm. then unscrupulous companies will want to set up a base in your country. There yeah. you go. Because they then know. You they see, can what slide through the cracks. Precisely. It's like dumping toxic waste that comes from nuclear products. Yep. Mm. If countries are paid to take it in, but at what cost to their people? Exactly. And it's not cost for a year. It's like a lifetime of costs. You know, one thing we can be sure of is that in this country, the laws and the regulations on environment management are watertight. They are clear. Mm. And they are very, very clear. It is people who don't do what they're supposed to do. Yes. Exactly. If we're talking about the same, same Siokimau now, this, because just 100 meters from this company is where you have companies that are dumping raw sewage on the road. There you go. Same, same area, same, same um, 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 National Environment Management Authority, same thing would say, all right, they're going to turn same a Same county eye. inspectors. Same county inspectors who have been given the mandate or given the responsibility to make sure such things are not being done. But they're going to turn a blind eye because, all right, somebody's going to shove a few shillings in their direction. Whereas the thing should be that you have a proper sewage system. The things should be that you're... For, because I am sure... I am very sure. All of these closet towns of Nairobi, the dormitory towns of Nairobi, mm. areas of Nairobi, they have a policy that should be followed. By the time they, they, they mushroom and open up, there's something that should be followed. It's not being followed. And somebody's turning a blind eye every single time. And I think this is where we keep talking about, you know, even as the governor says he's taking action and ensuring that uh, the wrongs have been righted, he should also take action against his officers. We ought to see, in fact, even prosecution proceedings happening. Actually, and the officers this one is resolved by moving them around. Mm -mm. Mm. No. Get, get rid of them. 
No. You need to see them. In no, courts. not just get rid of them. Prosecute. Mm. People should be prosecuted. You, see, you know some of these harms that we keep speaking about. People don't have to die. Environmental harm will last your whole life, and you can pass it on to your children. Yep. It's, it's not something generational. Yes. So, how exactly do you treat such a crime? Because it is a crime. Yep. Because that's the only way it's calling people to account.